Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About Houses. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Uh, so we got some really interesting data we want to share with you. It's about not only consumer sentiment, but about what people believe about real estate as an investment. And this is not our personal opinion. This is this was uh, Gallup's information. So Gallup's a pretty reliable source. I'm going to start with the first. I'm going to read off the slide. I'm going to put it up on the screen for you. Um, we'll, we'll go over these one at a time. So 30% say it's a good time to buy, 69% a bad time. This is actually the first time in... 40 years, I think, that it's under 50%. 50 mm -hmm. So usually it's anywhere from 50 to 80%. Half the people say it's a good time to buy. 80% say, it, uh, say it's a good time to buy. Mm -hmm. Th 50 to 80. Um, let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, I know this doesn't add it to 100. It's 30. And, and I don't know why in the, in the thing they put 30 and wrote it out, but 69, they put the number. Mm -hmm. Maybe Elon Musk made this. <laughs> but basically, most people think it's a bad time. Okay. Right. Why? Why do they think that? Wanna? What are some reasons you think they think it's a bad time to buy? Because there's a lot of press that says it's a bad time to buy. There's a lot of press talking about high interest rates. There's a lot of press about uh, layoffs. There's a lot of press about bad things. Bad things. Because, um, as William Randolph Hearst liked to say, if it bleeds, it leads. So bad news sells. Bad news is clickbait. Bad news is what people like to talk about. Good news is not something that people like to talk about. The other thing is people tend to focus on negative things and that just gets more eyeballs, whether it's uh, on YouTube, on TikTok, wh you know, wherever the eyeballs are. We used to say that it, it, it's, it's the talking heads on TV, uh, but of course it's so much more than the talking heads on TV. Now it's talking heads on YouTube. Uh, yeah, there we go, talking heads. <laughs> Before, I know you're going to say it because we say this on probably a third of the videos. You're going to put in the comments, yeah, but you're just real estate agents trying to jones people into buying houses. No, because we don't work with buyers. So literally, we don't care if you go buy a house. We can refer you agents. Someone in our office can help you. But we're not like looking for business for ourselves. No. This is not so, a video to get you to buy. Right. But if, if you thought we were jonesing for business, we'd be jonesing for business for listings because we, that's what we that's what we do. Uh, we do work with buyers, but not personally. We, we do have people in our office that we can have help you if you're a buyer. But if we were jonesing for things, we would be sitting here saying, hey, the market's crashing. Right. Go ahead and sell your house with us. We're not doing that. Okay. This is why I think this is hilarious. So they had a, the article had a chart. I'm not going to put the chart up. I may put it in the comments. The chart showed... The guess what year was the best time in history ever that people, 80% of people said was the best time to buy a house? 2005? It was 2005. It was 2005. It was literally the best time ever. And it was the top of the market. Okay, I want so an add a girl because I, I didn't peek at your chart. She didn't peek at the chart. 2005, <laughs> people thought it was the best time ever to buy a house. After prices had run up like 50%. It's the best time to buy a house, right? So they don't know. Like people are like, that was literally... Historically, the worst time, you, if you're trying to time the market, okay. the worst time you could have. So, people, what, what people do is they just follow everybody else. It's, it's kind of a, a, a lemming thing, right? Yeah. So, when people are, um, when people see real estate appreciating, then that's when they say it's the best time to buy a house. When people see uh, real estate depreciating, then they say that's the worst time to buy a house. So, even at the bottom of the real estate market, when that was a great time to buy a house, I mean, if you bought a house in 2010, 11, 12, you scored, right? But at that time, people said that that was a bad time to buy a house. It was the four of the five worst years ever to buy a house were those four years. And it was like, that was like, so five years prior, when home, median home prices were like well over 300,000, it was a good time to buy. And then when home prices in Vegas dropped to like 135, median home price, that was a bad time to buy. Like, wait, like the people aren't even thinking like, so it was a good time to buy it back because there is, so this is interesting side note. There's this book called Predictably Irrational. <laughs> it talks about how humans, humans behave and how we think and how we sort of use comparison and follow the crowd. And it's a fascinating book. It's probably one of the, it's, and it's this no-name book. It's, it's not written by Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, it's written by some other guy. But it was fascinating. I read the book and I was like going, oh my God, like it's so odd. After you read the book, it's so obvious why people do the stupid things that they do. Um, so, okay, we're going to go back to this. Seven, but here's the thing. People, and, and the Fannie Mae report said 25%, only 24% of all people said home prices would decline, mm -hmm. right? Remember that? That was the one you looked at. 
but seven and 10 expect home prices to rise in their local area, even though they most of them say it's a bad time to buy a house. So they're watching the news, they're seeing home prices going up, so they're saying home prices will go up, mm -hmm. but then they're seeing how bad it is to buy a house, and they're saying they believe it's a bad time to right. buy a house. Again, because they're hearing all this data out there, and they're just kind of, mirroring what they're hearing without really yeah. looking at it and understanding and using rational thought to process the information. And what we're not trying to do on this channel is to try to convince you of a thing. We no. get accused by the, cr the crash crowd, I call them, the market will crash crowd. For the last four years plus have been saying the market will crash and it hasn't crashed yet. And uh, they've been saying that it, you know, it's gonna crash. And we have, we've been saying, well, we're not saying it's not going to, but we're not seeing it. Like, we actually have the video after this we're doing is the national foreclosure numbers. So quick uh, time out for everybody. You have to subscribe right now, hit the notification bell, because when that video comes out, it's gonna blow you away. The numbers, are your, are, you're just gonna be like, what? How come, and this is, like, this is the data. This is the foreclosure data. Um, it, it's historical too, it goes back, I think, 20 years. Um, uh, but here's the great thing about this. People think it's a bad time to buy a house. Seven in 10 expect home prices to ride rise and but American all the people that they pulled the Gallup poll this is a Gallup poll they, they believe real estate's the best long-term investment and that included every other thing we got a list of the things and the percentages they still think it's the best investment right so look we believe that real estate is a good investment we believe that because everybody has to live somewhere uh, we like stability in our lives and we like to be able to call some place home without having somebody throw us out of our home right I mean that just basic things we all like to nest, especially women like to nest. Um, sorry, ladies, we do like to nest. <laughs> uh, most Americans believe that housing prices will only get higher with 70% predicting mm -hmm. they would increase over the next year. 18% said they would stay the same. 12% say they would decrease. So of the 30%, they didn't, all 30% didn't say they would decrease. Mm -hmm. You had 18% say they'd stay the same, 12%. That's one in eight people, right? Um, the Fannie Mae numbers were pretty similar. You had like 20 something percent said they would, 24 percent said they would decline, 40 something percent said they would go up, and then the rest just said they would stay the same. But it, the ratios are the same. Most people think they'll go, go up. The next amount of people think they'll stay the same, and the least number of people will think they crash. But remember, right? we are now, you know, at, at the end of spring, so real estate, what, what happens every year? This is not just this year, every year. You know, we kind of peaked in the spring, so now we're going to start to, to tail down, and and we'll, we'll kind of continue to slide down, not at this rate, but I'm just over gesticulating here, um, so that by the end of the year, that's when it starts swinging back up because this is what happens every year. Yeah. Real estate is cyclical on on a seasonal basis. So you know, how much does it go down? We don't know, but inventory hasn't picked up significantly. And so long as inventory doesn't kick up significantly, we don't anticipate prices to, uh, to, to fall significantly. Do we expect that prices m may level off somewhat? Yes. Uh, you know, the argument can be made that as people are anticipating interest rates rising, they may actually rush into the market to go ahead and get you know, a better interest rate than they might get a few months from now. So that argument can be made too. Arguments can be made on both sides, right. however, the argument of the inventory level is a hard one to beat. We, there simply are not enough houses being built to account for an oversupply. Not, not that it can't happen, but it can't happen overnight. So watch those building numbers. Watch the building permits being pulled. Watch what, what builders are doing. That'll give you a better idea of where inventory is going. Um, between 2008 and 2012, this is Gallup. We didn't make these, this up. <laughs> Americans were most likely to say home prices would decline or stay the same rather than increase. They decline, and I remember about 2009 or something, it was around 2009, we had, uh, I won't remember if it was an investor or what, but they had said that they had talked to somebody who was a professor at UCLA, mm -hmm. and they specifically said that the Las Vegas real estate market would decline another 15%. So. Home prices have gone from like a 310 median to like 135 or something mm -hmm. from 2005 to 2011. And they were gonna go down 15% more. And this is when we had people showing up in 2011 with that, ha that would show up with like $5 million mm -hmm. and say, I need to buy 50 houses, rental houses. 
so I want to buy like 50 $100,000 houses and I need to just get $1,000 a month rent out of them. And the numbers are great, by the way. Obviously, yeah. those houses are worth that, that $5 million today is probably worth $15 million, right? Mm -hmm. And plus, they've been collecting rent, a mm -hmm. ton of rent the whole time. But I just think it's interesting that at the bottom of the market, people, you would think people would say, look, prices have gone down so much. I think they're going to go back up at some point. But they say they're more likely to decline or stay the same. Right. So, you know, th that's kind of the, the way it goes. Everybody has an opinion. We have an opinion. Uh, we like to back up our opinions with data. If you have different data than we do, please share your data with us because we want to learn. We, and we appreciate uh, an, any data that contradicts us so that we can get better at, at what we do and we can learn. So please share that with us. And don't, please don't share data that, that's that, like, oh, well, X percent of the people are just speculating because you, how do you know? Like it's not it closing, you know, when you close the title company says, are you a speculator or not a speculator? You mean right? you haven't seen the form where it says single married speculator? Yeah. And, and you can't argue that an investor buying a rental house is a speculator because that no, because people like most people, actually, most people that buy investment properties keep them longer than homeowners. Mm -hmm. They keep them longer than homeowners. OK. Right. Um, this is what's really cool. This is Gallup. They've been they pull people every year. Each year since 2014, more Americans choose real estate as the best long-term investment over stocks, gold, savings accounts, or bonds, and it's substantial. 45% pick real estate, 24% stocks, uh, gold savings. Now, if you watch some of the other YouTube channels, this is funny. There was a guy is recently as a year ago. Not going to say his name. He's super famous, and he. He gets a ton. He, if he found out I was trash talking him, <laughs> you some of you probably know who he is. He has a big show and he, he's on all the time. He has videos that says tons of them. Why would you ever pay off your mortgage? Throw that money into the stock market. Like real estate's a terrible stocks outperform it over a long over a long period of time. You should for real estate's a terrible investment. Blah 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 blah. Right. Um, if you there are actually lots of people who say that. If you bought a house, if you if you had a million dollars last year, this time and bought real estate, and you bought stocks last year, you're you're up on your real estate and you're down in your stocks. So I don't know that I would agree with that. But what's funny is, like not too long ago, he did a couple videos where he I was touting real estate as a great investment. <laughs> so it's funny. I just think it's like it's like the flag. Like whichever way the wind is blowing, it's going to get more views and the the opinion changes but um, I just this is you know this is the data 45% said real estate and then the other thing that surprised me is gold mm -hmm. how many gold the people either I know some of the people I know you're out there uh, we have a pretty diverse audience that watches most are male 75% are male um, most are between the ages of 35 and mid 50s that's the kind of the demographic Gen Xers basically um, I know there's some preppers that if those of you know preppers I know there's some preppers that watch the channel and then, uh, then um, the gold people, the people that only will buy, like literally 100% of their their whole life is in gold. Like every every time they get paid, you know, they 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 purchase gold, right? They they are holding gold and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I know people that literally, like their whole 401k is in these gold. You can buy like interest in a thing where you it's like buying stock in gold. You just buy gold, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that's a really strong group of people. And they have the argument. And what's funny is that those people, if when they'll, if you talk about the stock market or whatever, they always talk about hyperinflation, what's going to happen. And I've been hearing this for like 30 years, but they always mention real estate. And then they kind of go, yeah, real estate's probably a good investment. Because like you, if the whole financial system fell apart, you could still like argue that you could rent out your house and force somebody to give you something in gold in return. Like they could take their gold bar out of the safe and shave off some gold and you could weigh it. And then you could take gold from them as a means of... I have problems with gold. We're not going to talk about gold anymore because I have problems as a medium of exchange because everyone doesn't have it. It's like Bitcoin. Everyone doesn't have it. So it's kind of, you know. I think Bitcoin's great. Um, my only problem is I can't live in Bitcoin. So right. as Bitcoin value changes, if it goes down, my house is still here and I can still live in it. But, um, you know, Bitcoin, I'm a fan of Bitcoin, but not exclusively. I'm, I'm not a fan of anything exclusively. And I just think that real estate is another asset class and it's something to be considered. Um, and I'm not dissing Bitcoin or, or gold, uh, but I'm simply saying that I think real estate is an important part of anybody's portfolio. Uh, we have sold 3,000 houses. 
every single time somebody comes and tells us they're selling their house, mm -hmm. they want us to list the house, the first thing we say is, do you have to sell it or have you thought about renting it out and having it managed and growing your wealth that way? Having, you know, you know, if you talk to a financial planner, like what do they think? Um, but we always ask them that. Mm -hmm. Almost no real estate agent will do that because if they go, hey, maybe I will keep it as a rental because now you lost a sale. Mm -hmm. You lost a chance to make a commission selling a house. We always ask that because that's, I just want to know. I don't want people to not like have the, I would rather you make a good decision mm -hmm. rather than, um, you know, just make a bad decision. Right. But. You know, and kind of to Todd's point, um, I, I've worked with people before who purchased homes because their agent told them to purchase a home and then within months their agent said, oh, by the way, you know, the market's shifting, you need to sell the home, and then they sell the home. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, you know, uh, these people are just paying money left and right uh, on this transaction because the agent is making money, but at no point has this agent taken the time to have a conversation with, with this person and say, hey, does this make sense for you? Is this a good financial choice for you? Uh, so, you know, think about things a little bit and give it give it good consideration. Put pencil to paper. Do the numbers make sense for you? If it makes sense to, to sell it, then sell it. If it makes sense to live in it, then live in it. If it makes sense to rent it, then rent it. But you have to do the math, do the work, uh, and not just listen to somebody who has a financial interest in what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so we thought we would share the data. It's very interesting. I still think it's interesting that how people think and how, you know, because you just know that historically we're going to look back. Like someone's going to be watching this video. You can actually go back to my videos all the way, I think, to 2008 or nine. You can go back and look at some of the videos. I had more hair and it wasn't gray. <laughs> and you can look at the videos and I'm talking about stuff that's happening and market updates and things like that. And um, uh, I have some videos that still get views from like 13 years ago. Nice. Uh, the um, uh, Great Depression Millionaire video still gets views every single day. People watch it. And then move, that's 13 years old, 13 year old <laughs> video. And so, but um, it'll be interesting like in 10 years this, to go back to this video mm -hmm. and, and, and people, someone's gonna watch this video and post a comment and say, hey, I can't believe people like back then said the market was gonna crash because here it is today and this is what actually happened, mm -hmm. like, right, or whatever. Or all those people who just said they sold their house because they, or whatever. We don't know, we don't know if the market's gonna go up, we don't know if it's gonna go down, we don't know if it's gonna crash, we don't know if it's gonna explode, hyperinflate, we don't know any of that. All we know is that with everything we're saying, there's no, the market could certainly cool off, it could certainly have more inventory, mm -hmm. it could certainly start a very slight decline, mm -hmm. but would that overcome the, the, like would it be enough to sell the house? Because now you have to pay rent and you're losing out on your mortgage interest deduction and you're paying more in rent than you'd be paying and then you'd have selling costs, like is that worth it? Mm -hmm. And most people, I can tell you overwhelmingly, it's not worth it right. because most people are not selling their house. Like when listings are up 13%, people are like, yay, like the, the, the market crash, you're just like, yay, this is the sign, the listings are up 13%. Well, last year this time they were up 13% and the year before that, at the same time, they were at 13%. year before that, they were at 13%. Because what happens? All the houses get are massive amounts of selling, and then homes are on the market a little longer, mm -hmm. so there's more inventory, and there's more inventory all the way to November, and then what happens? And then it starts going down again, mm -hmm. right? Because they said this in 2021, this is it. This is the last year. Inventory rise, it's gonna crash. I did the video at the beginning of 2021, said the market wasn't gonna crash, mm -hmm. and guess what it didn't do? It right. didn't crash, and I got, blown up by people who said I was wrong, I didn't know what I was talking about, just some dumb real estate agent, and it turns out I was right, I've been right four years in a row, still don't think it's gonna crash. If I if I thought tomorrow, if everything changed, that was a crash, we'd come on, do a video, and, and explain we, why we were wrong and why the market's crashing, right. but we, ha we can't do that video yet. Right, no, and remember, this market is totally different than, than it was, uh, you know, 12 years ago, because we have 25% of the market is bought cash, that's a lot of support for the market. We didn't have that a dozen years ago. Uh, we have a lot of uh, institutional investors in the market that are hanging on to these properties long term. They will not be selling them in onesies. They will be simply bundling their portfolio and selling it to the next institutional uh, buyer. So they won't so, hit the market. So, so they That's won't, the magic so, so, thing. Right. They won't hit the market in onesies. So it's a whole different market. So the people who are saying, hey, you know, the, the sky is falling, 
it's a completely different market. For that to happen, we would simply have to have more homes being built. And that's not happening right now. It will happen but it's not happening right now and we all know why it's not happening we've got a labor shortage we've got material shortage we've got all these things going on so in order to have more homes in the pipeline that's going to be uh, something that that's going to happen over an extended period of time and you can watch for that this is something you can do you can you can see in your own market uh, building permits being pulled you can see how many homes are, are being built by, by by the builders in your market so this is something that you can track in your own market you yeah. you are powerful you can see this yourself you can follow that data yourself you don't have to listen to anybody else you have to listen to us you can see it in your own market yeah what what's interesting that Juan has said about home building we, we did this on another video so you, if you watch some of the videos you can um, find this slide but the 50 year trend of new home construction, the last year it was above the 50 year trend, I meaning the average number of homes built mm -hmm. was 2005. Mm -hmm. 2006 to today, we have been below, we have built less homes than the 50 year home building average. Mm -hmm. 50 year home building average, we've been below it for 16, 17 years straight now. It's, we're getting close to it. <clears throat> Next year might be the first year we we break the average, mm -hmm. but that just means we're above where the average of homes we normally build. And if you take the four, bil or four million homes that Freddie and Fannie say were short, and then you add in all the institutional investors who have purchased mm -hmm. homes, effectively taking them off the market permanently, because mm -hmm. they'll never put them back on the market and sell them. Like Juan has said, they'll just bundle 200,000 homes and sell them off to J.P. Morgan Chase mm -hmm. and say, here's here's a bunch of homes. But J.P. Morgan Chase is just going to try to dump 200,000 um, homes into the real estate mm -hmm. market at once. To, they'll, they'll never do that because it costs too much money. They would rather call up Bank of America and say, or Deutsche Bank and say, hey, we've got all these houses. We'll sell them to you at a 5% discount just buy the houses. And the market doesn't know. So people that are transacting houses with real estate agents, you never find out that the, the house you're, the, the, that's next to you that's a rental just sold in a bundle with a bunch of other houses. You don't know what that transacted for. This is also going to cause a problem with the tax assessor because they're going to see the name change on the deed, maybe. Or, they or, won't. Oh, no, they'll, they'll be just be in a corporation. They'll yeah. sell the whole LLC. Ex they'll, exactly. It's, they'll just sell the LLC mm -hmm. and, the, and the tax. Yeah, that's an interesting thing because then the, the counties are going to be like, hey, wait a minute, you just sold the asset we want our tax. We want our transfer tax. They won't see it. They won't see it because I just sold the house privately with 100,000 uh, other houses. Right. That's so, interesting. We should do a video on Right. It. So this is what, what's interesting about that is, so if you've got banana, you know, to your point, if you've got banana LLC and it's got 200,000 houses in it, uh, then you can sell that to the next investor and you're selling that LLC. Now, the tax assessor and the county won't know that that has actually changed ownership. But most law, state laws say you have to pay the tax. You can't, if you, you can't just change the name on the L owner of an LLC, that that triggers a tax event most places. Because what they're trying to get around is people who would put their house in the name of an LLC, sell the LLC and try to avoid the transfer tax. Right. So, so they actually were say, and actually I think in some places it says if the ownership changes over 50%, it has to. So like if you're a small partner, like mm -hmm. if you have 25% of an LLC that you own a house, mm -hmm. like some of these startups, there's one called Arrived Homes where mm -hmm. you buy a piece of a single house. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's in five or ten percent blocks. Mm -hmm. You buy a piece of a house, and you you're a, one owner in the house. But you want to sell your interest. You sell the interest, and then another person buys the interest because it's not over fifty percent. You don't have to go pay a transfer tax mm -hmm. to a to like a a, a county or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that, that that's going to be an interesting yeah. thing. How counties are going to uh, find a way to track this because. You know, this is a lot of revenue that the counties are going to be losing if they're not collecting money uh, for the transfer tax on these bundles being uh, ch changing hands. We need to go to New York and meet <laughs> with one of the hedge fund guys and do a video where we talk about what the what the plan is, like with all these homes being purchased. You know, I'm willing to take one for the team. Take and one go for to the York. team. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, kind of a long video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, notification bell, leave us a comment. We'll see you on the next video. And if you have a hedge fund manager who has uh, these properties, please, please, please put a, uh, give, us, uh, give us a ring because we want to go ahead seriously and meet with somebody in New York or wherever the hedge fund ma manager is and have this conversation with them. So please help us out. If yep. you know somebody, please, we would appreciate the help. So subscribe, hit the notification bell, like the video, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.